In the previous exercise, we wrote a simple translator that translated English into Zulu, but we only had a vocabulary of two words. In this exercise, we're going to continue with that program. We still have a language with only two words, but at least now our translator will be able to translate um, from English to Zulu, Spanish or Afrikaans. Okay, so how are we going to change this? We now have to choose a language. So I'm going to add a, a combo box that will contain the three languages. I'm going to add its items. So I'm going to say Zulu, Spanish, and Afrikaans. Okay, just going to change the combo box's name to CBO language. Okay, now we have to change our translate button so that it will take the language from the combo box, the selected language, and then um, use that to do the translation. Okay, so this means that for every language we will have a part like this, where we check whether it's warm or cold and then change it to the new word. So in the, we can say, if Okay, now I'm going to say CBO language dot text is equal to Zulu, and then we put everything here in curly brackets up to the end of the else part. So now, see, when I put the curly bracket in the correct position, everything else moves to the right. If you are typing your program and this does not happen, then it means you are using your curly brackets incorrectly. So I wanted to put everything we had in our if statement before. I wanted to make that part of the if part of another if statement. So I enclosed it in an opening bracket, a left bracket, and a right bracket. Okay. So if I now run the program, and I type warm, and I select Zulu, and I click on translate, the program works as before. If I type Old and I leave it on Zulu and click translate, it will give me the right word. If I type, okay, if I type, sorry, if I type there um, some gibberish and I translate, it says, sorry, I don't know that word. If I choose another language, Spanish, and click on translate, nothing happens. Or Afrikaans and click on translate, nothing happens. That is because we have that if statement that checks whether the language that we've chosen is Zulu. But we haven't included any if statements that check whether it's Afrikaans or Spanish. Okay, so we're going to do that now. So we have our if there and the if ends over here. So now we're going to say else if. I'm actually now going to copy everything that I have from there to here. So, I now have two identical if statements, but I'm going to change this one to check for Spanish. Okay. And then, in this part, we have to Go and change the Zulu word for warm to the Spanish word, which is caliente. And the same with cold, which is frío. Right. So now we have the Spanish translation and we have the Zulu translation. 
we still have to put in the Afrikaans one, so I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm just going to create another copy of the Zulu one, and then I'm going to change this to Afrikaans. And here I'm going to say, so warm in Afrikaans is also bottom, and cold is a coat. So the three parts look exactly the same. So we have, if it's Zulu, then we check for warm in lowercase, warm in uppercase, and we give the warm word for warm in that language. The same for cold. Then, else if it's another language, if it's Spanish, then we test again. Is it warm in small letters or warm in capital letters? And then we give the Spanish word for warm. And so on. So if we now run the program, so we will see I can now type warm, select Spanish, translate, and that will give me caliente. If I type Afrikaans and say translate, it gives me para. If I say um, cold in capitals and translate, it says coat. If I say um, warm, in the next video, we're going to take the same program and we're going to um, give you a different solution, a different programming solution to the problem. Um, so you're going to learn how to use the switch statement in C-sharp.